Hey guys, Arthur here. Today I would like to show you how you can deploy a smart contract from any web application. Today, as an example, I will use Next.js app. However, this technique will work for every other web application that uses JavaScript. So uh, I will use Wagmi. You might know it from some other videos from this channel. I really like Wagmi because I think it has a really nice set of React hooks. I'm using Next.js, which means I'm using React, so it's great to use it. Um, then we have VM, which is something like Ethers. So basically, it's a library that allows us to send some transactions or interact with um, EVM uh, blockchains. Um, in my opinion, it's way more better than Ethers. So I highly recommend you to check it out. Um, the last thing that we're going to use is Web3 model, which is a great library uh, for connecting cryptocurrency wallets. So for example, if we have a Web3 application and we want to connect the wallet, um, we can support way more wallets than just MetaMask with ease. So I will show you how to configure the Web3 model and uh, we will deploy a random smart contract from Sepolia network. It's just something that I found on the blockchain explorer. Uh, however, this technique that I will show you today, it works perfectly with any other smart contract. So if you developed something yourself or somebody from your team de um, develop a smart contract for you, you, or you just want to take some completely different contract, something for NFT, something for DeFi, it doesn't really matter because it will work. So let's get started. So I started here with regular Next.js application and then installed all the required dependencies like Tanstack, React Query, Wagmi, um, and so on. Uh, you can find the uh, GitHub link to this repository in the description of this video. So check it out and make sure that your project has all these dependencies installed. The first thing that you have to take care of is the config file. So here we have the Wagmi configuration and also Web3 model. Um, so for example, you can see here that we are importing the default Wagmi config. Um, then we have some storage for the settings required by Wagmi. And then we have the list of chains that we're going to use. Here I have the mainnet and Sepolia. However, for you, if you are developing on some other test nets or uh, poly Polygon or Binance Smart Chain or anything that is EVM compatible, you can just import here the chain. Um, then there is a project ID, which is something that you can get from walletconnect.org. You have the link in the description of this video, so you can just create a new project of Wallet Connect and uh, use it because it's actually required for Web3 model. Um, then we have a check if the project ID is specified, otherwise we have the error. Um, then we have some metadata about about um, the um Web3 model. So for example, here you probably want to place the name of your application, description of it, a URL and also icon because that would be visible um, for the user once they are connecting uh, with your application. And then we have uh, just um, the regular default Wagmi config. Um, and then there's an extra SSR flag set to true because we are using Next.js, which is uh, something that um, is generating on the server side. Um, if you are using just a typical React application, then this is not uh, needed. So this is the config.ts. Uh, um, then we have another interesting thing here, which is the wrapper. So here we are using the config. Um, and as I'm using Next.js, I'm also using um, the use client directive because um, this component is client side. Um, uh, it's impossible to use um, this Wagmi providers, query clients and all this stuff from Wagmi in the server side uh, on the server components basically so you have to have a um, separate file called wrapper or you can name it providers or however you want it but it cannot be the um, server component um, and then I have just a regular um, react component uh, that is wrapping the children prop within the providers and query clients. We need to do it because we want to wrap our whole application within this Wagmi provider and query client provider because we inside uh, every page that we're going to build wants to have access to the Wagmi because we want to send the transaction, deploy the contract, make sure that we have access to the cryptocurrency wallet. So that's why I have this wrapper. But just having this wrapper is not enough because you need to have this wrapper and then you have 
have to use it in the layout of your page. Um, so here you can see that inside the layout.tsx, um, which is a regular Next.js uh, layout file, I'm just importing the wrapper and then I'm wrapping the whole um, children prop within it. So that's the that's the reason why we need that because we need to have access to the WAGMI, as I pointed out. So um, this is um, this is the wrapper component. Um, we have it in the layout. And then the next thing that you have to do um, is basically um, grab information about your smart contract. So I created in the public folder um, the file called ERC20. And here you can see that there's a lot of stuff. And of course, I haven't typed this manually. This is something that you can grab from Blockchain Explorer or files that are generated in Hardhat or Foundry or anything else that you can use for creating the smart contracts. So if you are working in the team with the smart contract developers, they need to um, basically give you the ABI and the byte code um, of the smart contract. Um, if you are developing these smart contracts, you can just find them in the directories of um, stuff that you are using for building smart contracts. If you are using the Remix ID, you can copy the ABI and also the bytecode and just insert it into this JSON because we're gonna need this in the second because we will be importing ABI and the bytecode. Um, if you just want to um, take this from some existing smart contract, so for example, you know some smart contract which is ERC20 or something else, you can just go to the blockchain explorer, make sure that you click on the cro uh, co contract tab and then you have the contract ABI and then you have also uh, something like deployed bytecode. Um, so um, so 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 you can grab it here. Um, another uh, another uh, way of taking it is, for example, you have the transaction in which somebody deployed the smart contract. You can click here on the more details, and then you have the input data, which is basically the code that was used for generating this smart contract. So you can copy uh, this and just save it uh, here in this JSON file. And we need this in this JSON because in the second we will import the ABI and the bytecode uh, to the function that will let us actually deploy the smart contract. And all the magic happens in the deploy contract uh, React component. So as you can see, again, it's the use client. So it's a client component. Uh, first of all, we're gonna use the hook called use account, which will take the currently used account um, if somebody connected to our application. Because if somebody is not connected to the the, uh, to our application, we basically are not able to deploy the contract because we don't know if the customer or if the visitor is actually uh, using some cryptocurrency wallet because uh, we need that. Obviously, as somebody who deploys the contract needs to pay for this. So uh, first we have the use account um, hook from Wagmi and then I created um, here a very simple component. So for example, if there's no address present. So if we have this account returned by use uh, account hook and there is no address, then we are sure that somebody is not connected to our application. And then we are just showing um, the button from Web3 model that allows um, to connect. You you may notice that this, um, th this is weird syntax. Of course, there is no HTML attack like that. The reason why it works is that because in the config uh, file or actually not config, but a wrapper file, we have a function called create web tree model. And if you have this in your application, then you can actually use this special syntax here to show the web tree uh, button. Uh, so we are only showing that if somebody is not connected to our application. Um, and um, if somebody is connected, then we are showing here the address. And then we are showing a simple deploy button then that have on click handler and and if somebody clicks on this handler, then all, all we do is handle deploy is asynchronous function because first of all, we need to get a wallet client because if somebody is already connected, connected to our application, then Wagmi exposing uh, is to us the wallet client connection. Um, so we need to get it um, using get wallet client um, 
function and then we have this client uh, which is actually the wag uh, the vm client uh, and then we can do all the interesting stuff like interacting with blockchain sending transactions and so on you can check what is possible in the docs but here what we use it's it will be the deploy contract first we need to specify from which address we actually want to deploy so we have this thanks to the use account hook because we want to get not a random address but actually somebody uh, who is um, deploying in this moment um, then we have the abi and this is why we need this erc20 json because we need to store the abi i don't want to put it here inline and pollute the code inside this component so i'm just uh, beautifully importing it from this erc20 json uh, then we have the byte code um, and as well it's exported from this json and then it's very important thing uh, and here we have the arguments that are passed um, to the constructor of this smart contract if you have a smart contract that doesn't have any constructor you you can here pass just the empty array however if your smart contract has a constructor and here the smart contract just takes um, the address to which the erc20 tokens are by default minted and here i'm specifying just this extra address so this is something that you need to clarify what arguments are coming into the constructor of your smart contract so you can check it in this uh, smart contract code um, so for example here uh, if we deploy this contract uh, we can go um, to, to the contract code and we can um, scroll down and you can see here that we have mock ERC20 and we have constructor that actually takes one value and this is the reason why we need to specify it here um, so um, the last thing is that we actually have no message or no um, information um, that uh, something was deployed or not so I will um, uh, maybe solve it right now so uh, we're gonna have maybe some state so I will just import uh, use uh, state uh, from react and here it would be um, something like uh, const um, deployed set deployed um, and um, I will um, have here um, for example um, it will be empty uh, empty um, empty string um, and here um, we have the um, transaction and uh, we can specify um, set uh, deployed transaction uh, we can return uh, the paragraph uh, like uh, deployed uh, to some uh, hash so I will save it um, and uh, let's try our code I'm clicking connect wallet um, then I'm choosing metamask but as you can see we have all kind of other stuff available we can also use the QR code and scan it with our mobile phone uh, but I will go with metamask just to make um, everything easier for the demo and now we can click the deploy um, and now as you can see the Sepolia is asking me for the new contract deployment I will click here confirm and uh, yeah maybe the styling is not perfect but you can uh, figure this out on your own this is not the most important thing in this video and right now as uh, i can copy um, this transaction hash i will go here to the blockchain explorer of sepolia is created and we can come here and as you can see it's regular erc20 contract and that's all i prepared for you today um, you learned how to deploy contracts from your web applications you can use vm also on the back end so if you have a node.js application you can also use almost the same technique but just the configuration of the wallet is a bit um, different let me know in the comment section if you like the video or if you have some other proposals for future video tutorials like that i also prepared the invitation to the web3 frontend course check out um, in the first comment and uh, let me know what you think so thank you and see you on this channel.